Lift up the word and repeat after me. I believe this is the word of God. I believe what God says because it is impossible for God to lie. We have been talking the last several sessions about the Holy Spirit. We had a, a tremendous discussion, lecture, whatever you'd like to call it, this last Thursday night about some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're going to be coming back and talking more about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have some sessions set up talking about the fruit of the Spirit, which is something everybody has. You all have the fruit of the Spirit inside of you. It's not getting love, joy, and peace and the others. It's letting them flow. You already have the fruit of the Spirit. You receive the gifts of the Spirit. But today, I want to talk to you about another aspect of the Holy Spirit that may seem a little questionable to some people. I had a relative who visited a Pentecostal service. And this young man wanted to know on the way home why when the pastor walked up and put his hands on these women's heads in their service that they passed out and went into a coma. And, you know, when, when you see things like this happen, you see it on television, you see it in a service, sometimes you wonder, is this the Holy Spirit? Is this something that uh, people are just succumbing to mass hypnosis and they get so stirred up and they see it happen to other people that they just kind of do a courtesy drop because if they don't fall down, then it's going to look like they're not spiritual. What, what really is going on here? And I know myself, uh, I, I've seen it happen. I remember one time when I laid hands on somebody because I saw somebody else lay hands on somebody. And when I laid hands on this individual, uh, well, let me just tell you the story. There was a young man who, I won't mention his name because he actually uh, became somewhat famous with his radio program back in the 80s, but he was a young Baptist minister and he was in school in Bolivar, Missouri, going to Southwest Baptist College at the time. Now it's Southwest Baptist University. Loretta and I both attended there. And that's where I had met this man. He was in the Ministerial Association. And Loretta and I, at the time, were living over on the other side of the lake, eight miles down a gravel road on a point, and you couldn't get there from here. I mean, it was one of those places, our house, it was a nice house, we had some nice land, but to get there, I mean, you had to have, I don't think GPS even had that section of the world mapped off yet. So, uh, late one evening on a Saturday night, this young guy was on his way to Bunston, Missouri to try out to be their pastor the next morning. Now, the Baptists do that. My Baptist background is, is back there. And uh, that's the way I grew up. My mom and dad were Baptist. My dad was a Southern Baptist deacon. My mom taught a Southern Baptist Sunday school class. I was saved in a Baptist vacation Bible school, baptized in a Baptist church, went to a Baptist school, to study to be a Baptist preacher, which is stupid. You, can't, you don't study to be a preacher. You're either called or you're not. Okay. Where I met a Baptist girl studying to be a missionary. Um, we got married in a Baptist church and had two Baptist kids. And it just, I mean, my background was Baptist. If, I felt like if you weren't Baptist, somebody had been messing with you. You know what I mean? And so I was in the Baptist Ministerial Association at Southwest Baptist College is where I met this young man. And on his way to Bunston to try out, which that's another dumb thing, every preacher in the world's got at least one good sermon. You know, you don't have a guy come in and preach his sermon, and then you decide if he's going to be the pastor. No, tell him to stay home, send the family. You'll find out a whole lot more, you know, from the family. Talk to the kids, they'll talk to you. They'll tell you about Danny, you know. But at any rate, as custom was, he was on his way to Bunston, Missouri. He was going to try out the next morning. Well, he stopped off by our house, which is kind of a weird deal anyway, because like I said, you can't stop off at our house. And uh, so 
there he was, and he was just stopping by, and, and you know, we were both young guys, and we were both acting preachery. I wanted to be preachery to him, and he was preachery to me. And so we sat around the, the kitchen table, and we, we talked about the things of God. And so it finally got time to go to, go to bed, and I looked at my watch, and it was probably sometime around midnight or getting close, and he still had to drive up to Bunston that night, stay in some hotel and preach the next morning at the church. So Loretta made the suggestion to him. She says, well, we've got an extra bedroom. Why don't you just get a good night's rest here? You know, and then you can go to Bunston in the morning and preach your sermon. You'll be all rested up. So he said, okay, which by the way, his wife was a second grade school teacher. They had two little kids. And this guy was on the verge of what you would call a nerd. Am I too old? Does any, anybody know what that word means? And we're talking guys that look like NASA scientists, white shirt, little thin tie with a pocket protector and big glasses. You, you know, this is kind of the way he was. And, uh, and kind of shy. I'd never really heard him ever say too much. But at any rate, so we're sitting around our dining room table, me and Loretta and him, and we're holding hands and getting ready to say our good night prayer because, you know, we're good Baptists. Two out of three of us are potential preachers and one of us is a potential missionary. And so we're going to say our prayer before we go to bed at night. So we're holding hands. And I'm saying one of my, I'm tired, let's go to sleep kind of prayers. You know, you know how you do. You, well, Lord, bless brother as he goes and speaks at Bunston tomorrow and bless his family and give us a good night's sleep. And right in the middle of my prayer, bang, his head goes down and hits the table. And when his head hits the table, it doesn't just hit the table. It hits the table and starts vibrating. And then... I'm holding his hand in Loretta's. And I look over at him, wondering what's going on. Well, his, his, now, his whole body was shaken. Now, I've tried to do it to see if it can be replicated, but it really can't. Uh, I mean, his hands were shaken, and, you know, and, and he, was just, he was just all over the place. And he looks over, and, and I, I called him by name, and I said, are you okay? He messed up my prayer. You don't do that to a Baptist. No, not to a Baptist you don't. You can do a lot of things, but don't interrupt them when they're praying. My mama taught me that. I've got the marks to prove it. So, he looks over at me with his head still rattling on the table, and he says, and he looks at me, and his eyes are like cow's eyes. And he says, make it go away, make it go away. Well, <clears throat> I looked at Loretta and I said, I think it's time to go to bed. <laughs> well, see, Loretta was spirit-filled at the time. I wasn't. I mean, I, I was on the verge. I was seeking, but I mean, this is, see, I had been praying God, if any of this is real, I want to experience it. I mean, I had, I've, been, I've been commuting back and forth to college, you know. I took a full course, full 15 hours, but I got all my classes on Tuesday and Wednesday, or Tuesday and Thursday, and I was driving down to school every Tuesday and Thursday from early morning to late at night, taking a full load, and then working the rest of the week, and then pastoring this little Baptist church, and oh. And so, at any rate, uh, I'd been, all this time, I'd been praying, and there's another story to this that I'll tell some other time, but I've been saying, Father, if, there, if there's anything else, I mean, if, if healing is real, I'm tired of hearing about this guy in Omaha who had a next-door neighbor who knew somebody that was healed. I'm, I'm tired of demon possession. I mean, if, if it's going to happen, I'm tired of hearing stories. I'd heard a lot of testimonies. Now, I, I just, I know it's more blessed to, believe without seeing, but I, I kind of like need to see something. Father, 
And this was really tough for me. to. It, you talk about getting something out. I remember riding down the road going, even speaking in tongues. Oh, Lord. Oh, if it's real, I want to be there. So here we are. This guy stops off at our house. Our house isn't on the way to anywhere. So there he is, and um, Loretta says, no, I think you need to take care of this. And she gets up and goes over and stands in the corner of that little dining room and starts, who shot the rabbi, who stole my Hyundai, who, who tied my bow tie? I mean, she's, she's just rattling off in fluent tongues over there praying in the Spirit. And I, I didn't really know what to do. But I had seen something happen a couple weeks before, and so I thought, I'll try this. And so I asked him again, are you okay? By this time, Loretta's over there praying, and he's, his head is rattling on the table. I mean, the, the linoleum floor, you could, the chair and everything, and he, hey, make it could go away. So I said, stand up. So I stood him up, and he was like a Mexican jumping bean. I took him over, and I stood him, in the kitchen area and he's just rattling i mean and, and and so i just put my hand on his head and i said something about the holy spirit and anointing i don't know what i said i was just trying to repeat what i'd heard the guy say a couple of weeks before and this guy when i did he he just bang he just became stiff and straight as a two by twelve teetering in the breeze. And he just went back. Well, we, we had a, a humidifier back in the day when they were metal and had sharp edges. We had a, you remember those old humidifiers? I mean, looked like they'd been made out of old tank parts. So yeah, he went right down between the humidifier and that, and that counter that stuck out there in our kitchen. He went down and bang! Hit the floor. I thought I'd killed him. I could see the newspaper clippings the next week. Minister killed at Lake House. Occult practices suspected. <laughs> yeah. So he, he went down, and, and I went over to, to get him up, and he goes, no, just, ha, just leave me here. And, and he had his arms up. I'd never really seen that like that before. And I knew rigor mortis hadn't set in. So, but he, he was just laying there with his arms up. And he, and he started this, thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. And did I tell you the guy was not a thank you, Jesus kind of guy? I mean, he was a strict, nerdy, if he's watching, Baptist <laughs> friend. And so he, he laid there for a while. And, and maybe like, what, 10 minutes went by or something? Couldn't get him up. Now he just... Every time I'd go by, I, I didn't know what I'd done to him, you know. And I was trying to get him up, and he just would, didn't want to get, he's just, oh. And, and then I, I got him up. And then he, he started walking around the house. Glory to Jesus, hallelujah. Whoa, glory to God. And it took us till 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the night to get this guy to bed. He was just praising God and stomping around the house and glory. Did I tell you he had a, his wife was a second grade school teacher back down in, and she was just like him. Boy, she had no idea what we were sending back to her. <laughs> well, he got up the next morning early. Went to Bunston, Missouri to the Baptist church up there. Ripped up his notes. He preached a sermon right out of the heart, man. He was, it, did I tell you it was his last sermon there also? <laughs> he didn't get the job. Okay, so... He's on his way back to Bolivar after preaching up at Bunston, and he is just so excited. And he's never been exposed to anything. I mean, he, he doesn't know anything about anything. It's not like he's gone to a Pentecostal church. or, or He just doesn't even know what we do. You know what I mean? So he's driving back to Bolivar, and he just has the joy of the Lord. And he, he's try, he wants to sing a song. And the only songs he knows is the Baptist hymnal. Now, how many of you know what number one is in the Baptist hymnal? Holy, holy, holy. So he's driving down the road. You've got to hear him tell this story. 
driving down the road. Holy, holy, holy. Lord, God almighty. <laughs> Words started coming out of his mouth. He didn't know what they were. What freaked him out. He didn't know what to do. So he turned around and came back to our house. <laughs> and I wasn't home. Loretta was. So Loretta takes him into the house and set, they sat down at the table. She starts sharing with him that he had spoken in tongues. He didn't know. Now keep in mind, this guy's working on a degree in theology. He didn't know what she was talking about. She had to actually go to the Scriptures and show him in the Scriptures what had happened. And it was like, wow, I've never seen that before. I thought all that stuff had passed away, so we just ignore all that. See, and when these manifestations happen, people say, I've told this story before, and I've heard, heard people say, well, was that God? You know, or was that the devil? Well, let me give you the title of my short little message this morning. It's called, The Joy of Receiving the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you what it brought into that man's life. It brought joy. Now, he had a, a, a regional radio program at the time that was being broadcast out of some of the bigger cities, Kansas City, St. Louis, and whatever. But he called me about two years after that. And he said, uh, do you know what happened that day? He said, let me tell you what happened that day. He said, I had such a spirit of lust within me. He said, I couldn't go to the grocery store. I couldn't stand up to speak. I couldn't talk to a woman without imagining them naked. He said, that was constantly in my mind. Constantly. And he said, but when I hit the floor in your kitchen, he said, what made me so happy? He said, it all went away. And he said, I waited a while to make sure it actually stayed away. And it's gone. I was set free that day. So let me ask you this. Who do you think it is that took away that lust out of his life? Was it the devil? No, it was Jesus. Now, I'm going to give you some scriptures here. I'm going to read kind of quick. So you might want to just listen or watch the monitors. I don't know, but I'm going to go a little quick. First of all, in Luke 4.16... It says, so he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up as is his custom, as his custom was. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. I'm going to stop right there. That man's broken heart was healed that day because he was broken, because he had done everything. He had even gone to counseling. There was nothing he could do to get rid of what was happening in his, in his head and in his heart and in his life, but the Holy Spirit. Well, somebody may say, well, how did the Holy Spirit do it? Well, it wasn't the, the linoleum in our kitchen. I mean, that was cheap junk. You know, it wasn't the linoleum that when he hit it that did anything. No, it was the Spirit of God, the power of God, came upon him in a manifestation that was just, you would almost say, not normal. But why would we say it's not normal? Somebody may say, well, that didn't happen in the Bible. Well, how do you know that didn't happen in the Bible? You know, Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. That man experienced joy in the Holy Spirit. He had excitement within him. The joy was flowing through him. Now, in order to get free from hurts and disappointments, and don't raise your hands, it, this is what I call rhetorical, but how many of you have hurts and disappointments in life? See, we've got to have joy deep within to get rid of them. And if, if we don't have that joy, 
Honestly, if you don't let that joy of the Holy Spirit flow out of you, you will live your entire life bound by disappointments and regrets and hurts. And you may think you can't get rid of these things, but you can if you will allow the Holy Spirit to pour His joy out of you. It's not something that you make up. It's a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Falling down under the power is not a gift of the Holy Spirit. But it's one of the things that I've seen happen. I did not think it would ever happen to me. In an earlier session, I told about one time when it happened to me. Let me tell you something. When the power of God comes upon you, you can be Mr. I'm not going to fall down guy. But you can't withstand the power of God if your heart, if your heart is wanting more of God, your flesh can be saying, no, this doesn't look right. I don't want people to see me falling down. That's, but if your heart's right, you'll go down. And you probably go down harder than anybody else. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Where the Holy Spirit is present, there is joy. Wow. Now, let me read something to you here. Luke 10, 17. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Now look at this. Verse 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit. That word rejoice there in the Greek language, you can look, it means over the top rejoice. It usually means leaping and whirling and making a commotion. When Jesus, I mean, it was almost like, what do we call it, a fist bump? I mean, it was like, I mean, it was like Jesus was really getting with it. He was rejoicing. Now, most people don't think of Jesus that way. I was the worship leader at a church one time, and a lady followed Loretta and I into the restaurant, and she told me that she really, uh, I was leading worship, and she, she said uh, she really kind of wanted to let me know something. She wanted to let me know that it disgusted her to no end because I was so happy and joyful. And she said this, didn't she? she? She said, we know Jesus wasn't that way. When She said, read it in the Bible. When Jesus walked into town, he had six disciples flanked on the right and six disciples flanked on... I thought it looked like something like at the gunfight at the old K Corral. She said, and they walked into town... He was serious. He was taking care of business. You stand up there smiling and acting all happy. <laughs> I, you know, you want to say something. Well, I did. Uh, <laughs> this is what I, Loretta's my witness. I looked up at her, bless her sweet little heart. <laughs> and I said, well, you're, I'm going to heaven and so are you. And you're going to have to put up with me for all eternity. Here's what she said. Yeah, but I don't have to do it now. That's what, isn't that what she said? <laughs> okay. Some people just don't want to be happy. All right, listen to this. Peter was in a situation. Let me just read the verse. Acts 10.10, because I don't have time to give all the backstory. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance you break that down it doesn't mean he fell into a trance it means he fell and he went into a trance all right let me give you something else john 18 3 to 6 then judas having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and pharisees came there with lanterns torches and weapons Okay, torches and weapons. You got that? They weren't on their way to worship him. I have heard this preached so many times. These guys were on their way to worship him. Hello? You don't take weapons 
to worship. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom are you seeking? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. If you'll look in your Bibles, the word he is italicized. It's not there. What he said was, I am. Ho, ho. Hello? And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now when he said to them, I am, they drew back and fell to the ground. I've seen this in movies. He said, I am he. And they knelt down, went to the... No, that's not what happened. In, in the King James, I, I believe one of the versions says, they were thrown back to the ground. Listen, there is power. In the spoken word, there is power in the Holy Spirit. When Jesus said, I am the entire detachment of troops, including Judas with them, were pushed backward to the ground. The power of God. You can call it falling under the power, being slain in the Spirit, just the power of God. You say, well, but they weren't Christians or whatever. We're talking about the power of God. I'm just showing you the power of God can do that. Three different times in the book of Acts, Paul talks about his road to Damascus. Look at this. In Acts 9, 4, it says, Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, He was not riding a horse. That comes from a, a painting that was made back in the Middle Ages. There was an artist that made a painting of Paul falling off of the horse. No, you, you can read other Jewish accounts. He wasn't on a horse. He was walking. And when he w fell to the ground, what happened was, remember, there was a bright light. He fell. Where? To the ground. You say, well, that doesn't mean anything to me. Well, it doesn't have to. But here's, here's all we need to do. We need to not criticize other people's manifestations. See, as we move along in this teaching of the Holy Spirit over these next few weeks, you don't criticize somebody else's manifestations. You don't judge how the Holy Spirit comes upon them. You don't judge the way they speak in tongues. You don't judge the inflection of their voice. They may have an interpretation of tongues, but they don't come out and say, Thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel. And then say, they may not be that way. They may have a meek voice. God's going to talk to you the way He talks to you. You're going to understand Him the way you understand. God loves you. It may be, don't criticize somebody if that's the way they talk. I went to a church one time where everybody spoke Elizabethan English in church. I mean, the preacher would get up and he'd say things like, Twitter be yours, thou dost thou not? You know, and I'm thinking, what did he say? And then you see him at the grocery store and he says, Doth thou have tied? <laughs> you, know, you know, well, maybe, see, maybe that's the way they talk. You don't know. All right. You ever think about the guards who were standing by the tomb? In Matthew 28, 4, it says, And the guards shook for fear. Now, here's guards guarding the tomb. And they became like dead men. What's that mean? They shook, and then they went. No, they became like, how do, if you're standing up and you become like a dead man, what happens? You fall down. Was it the devil that made him fall down? No, it was the power, the manifested power of God. So as we travel through these next few weeks and talk about the Holy Spirit, you keep your eyes on Jesus. You seek the giver. And now follow me on this. We're supposed to pursue gifts in our heart. I understand that. But you pursue the, the giver of the gifts. You worship Him. You see, here's the, here's the deal. You worship God, not what God's going to give you. You don't worship what God gives you. You worship Him. 
And it's the same way when it comes to the gifts. You don't worship the gifts. You worship the giver of the gifts. He's the one that distributes the gifts. And be open to any manifestation. Let me tell you something. What happened in my house with that Southern Baptist pastor was just a door opening to show me some things. And trust me, over the next six months, I mean, to relate the story of what happened over the next six months, most people would say, well, that can't happen. But it did. Supernatural, miraculous things. And I think if we just open ourselves up, somebody may say, well, why do not those things not happen every day now? Well, you know, the Bible tells us to become like children. And I think it's because children will just receive, receive, receive. And then they mature up. We don't want to mature ourselves away from the manifestations of God. I want things to happen. I want things to happen in your life. I want things to happen in your life. I, I, I don't have to see it to believe it, but I'll tell you what. There is a refreshing and a joy that comes. Why, why do we have these things? They bring joy. I remember one time when I did go out under the power. I had some major things going on in my life. But when the Holy Spirit just turned out the lights and turned on the light and I hit the carpet, oh my goodness, I still remember the peace and the joy that was flowing through me. And I've never been a run around the church kind of guy. I've seen Jim do it. But Jim's always been a runner, you know. But, <laughs> but the joy that comes. You got a heaviness in life? The Holy Spirit takes away that heaviness. The Holy Spirit brings peace, comfort, relaxation. You're so stressed out, you think you want to take your life? Just start worshiping the Lord in the Spirit. That'll solve that problem. Because once the joy of the Lord starts flowing through you, there's nothing else like it. Praise God. Let's stand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love You. And we give all honor to You. We thank You, Father, for Your blessings. We thank You for Your Holy Spirit. And we thank You, Father, that as this day progresses, that everyone in this room will have the opportunity to allow Your Holy Spirit to just flow through them. It may be in the car, it may be at home, it may be sitting down and having a cup of coffee and then all of a sudden they will know your Spirit is present. Bless them, Father. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen.